I'm representing the team. Uh, the paper was written by an undergrad student from Queen's University, and his name is Peter Caniglia. He's unable to come here. As you know, it's the middle of the semester. Uh, and Balaji, he's my co-author, and he is with uh, Defense Research and Development Canada, where I was also in part previously, before becoming a Canada Research Chair in Sensor Systems at uh, Department of Systems and Computer Engineering, Carleton University. So I was the only one who was freely available, I guess. So I'm here. Okay, so um, uh, the talk is on geolocation of mobile objects from multiple UAV optical sensor platforms. The previous speaker spoke about the device, now I'm going to talk about the systems, so mostly at the system level. Okay, so the talk is roughly uh, into the six topics, so a brief introduction, a background of uh, how things are done in, and generally tracked. And then I, we have some simulation scenarios, uh, one with no clutter and then one with clutter. And then we demonstrate our idea with the real data validation. Then I conclude my talk. Well, uh, I think the current scenario is that people are into UOVs because they are interested in autonomous vehicles. And the idea is uh, low, very easy deployment and low cost. And as a consequence, in order to make sure that there's low cost, people have been using optical sensors instead of other expensive sensors. And you can have multiple UAVs, and then you can deploy them to either image or to get the information that you want to look at. So here, particularly, this work was used for defense-related uh, work, of which I'm only talking about the unclassified part. And partly, this work was done under what we call as TTCP, T, one of the T standing for just the, Technical Cooperation Program under the Five Eyes, which is all the English-speaking big countries, including US, UK, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Part of this was in developing a software, uh, open, uh, open uh, software, so which people can download and use. And then um, we wanted to make sure that that is available for everybody to use, including the TTCP countries, and mostly in the area of uh, um, tracking and geolocation. So uh, the reason why we are using optical sensors is uh, less susceptible to clutter and track proliferation. So maybe I will just uh, divulge a little bit more from this uh, point, just to say what a clutter is and why optical sensors are less prone to clutter. So generally, in the defense area, we use radars. So you could have a radar sensor, and the radar sensor, which is an active sensor, will be sending a signal out, and then we'll be looking for the returns. And you can use a single sensor and then go along a trajectory and then uh, collect, uh, collect it as if you have several of these uh, data acquisition at different points in time and create an image. And that is called as SAR video, SAR standing for synthetic aperture radar. Instead, you could do the same thing using optical sensors. The only difference being radar sends all the reflections for anything that comes in its way. And optical sensors don't do that, so you'll be able to filter out things. Here, you'll have to do a clutter suppression. In optical sensors, also, you need to do a clutter suppression, but the signal processing used for clutter su suppression in case of optical sensors is very less computationally intensive. Okay, and then we are, since we are going to use multiple UAVs, we are going to have multiple sensors giving out the data, and then we are going to fuse the sensor using a centralized fusion. Uh, idea. A centralized fusion is fusing the measurements from multiple sensors uh, at one point uh, or in one area uh, to increase the overall tracking performance instead of each of the sensors doing its own processing. So it's all sent to a localized centralized processor which does the fusion. So in this work we are going to do two simulations. First to say that it's possible to do an air to ground tracking with two airborne sen sensors while you're using a moving ground target. Uh, a point to consider is that if you have two airborne sensors, then it's possible to geolocate one target. So if you have three or more, you can do more objects. And if one of, if any one of them is moving, then you can probably do the geolocation for many more objects. Uh, when you have multiple uh, sensors which are uh, working together, there are many more of operations. So one operation would be to synchronize all of them and then do a time difference of arrival, which would be very expensive because you need to have perfect synchronization. 
or you can do away with that and do an individual geolocation and then later on since you have the time time of arrival as well you can then fuse later on so we have used that idea over here in our simulations and also later on in the real data acquisition so we are going to present two scenarios and the first scenario is without clutter and we are going to use extended common filtering using the centralized fusion idea and in the second one we are going to use the scenario with clutter and then you are using a data association technique which is a probabilistic data association filter for ensuring that <coughs> we have a, a better geolocation and in irrespective of whether there was a clutter or no clutter we are showing our experiments show that uh, there is an increase in the accuracy of the final track okay uh, the requirement in the defense is that you should be able to track the object at all time without losing them. And most of the cases you want to do that without the enemy knowing that you're tracking them. So you do, mostly you do not want to have active tracking because in that case you're giving away the pre giving away the fact that you are present. So you want to do it in a very <clears throat> in a way that nobody knows that. And so basically this optical way of sensing is a better way to do that and mostly if you have weather conditions which are leading to poor visibility if you have just a single sensor you must lose the track and therefore having more sensors is advisable so in this in this case we are saying the second drone with an optical sensor allows for better tracking <coughs> so how do we do this so you look collect the collect the image and then look for um, the target. The target is identified by making this differentiation that it is totally different from the neighborhoods. So basically you look for the intensities and then you make a blob around the intensity, a higher intensity, a region of higher intensity and once you do that you know that that's an object of interest and then you look for the centroid of that. Once you get the centroid of that, that gives you the location information. The XY coordinates. So the blob detection methods detects the regions of the image that differ from the background. And then you use this information to track, which means that as you get all the frames, you see how it is changing. So here is a ship, and it's a very poor resolution image. And so you take this uh, blob here, and then you find the centroid of that blob, and that tells you the location of that ship so it's an approximate location and that's more than enough for you to know where the ship is so in this scenario we are showing uh, a, a car which is going on a straight line at a constant velocity and then we are having two drones drone one and drone two uh, drone one is at 150 meters while drone two is at 100 meters but if you see that the drone two is behind a building so drone two cannot see drone cannot see the object for quite some time till it comes out of the till it come, goes out of the target uh, sorry goes out of the building's view and then it will be able to see the path whereas the drone one is continuously able to see the moving object so in this scenario the red car is moving forward as i said with a with a constant velocity while the target is being measured by two airborne, device, airborne drones, out of which both of them have one optical sensor each. So the drone 2 is behind the building for the first 20 seconds of the simulation and is not receiving any of the measurements from the target, while drone 1 is continuously getting the measurements. And the measurement is taken, in this case, every two seconds. <coughs> so the obstruction of drone 1, since drone, uh, sorry, drone 2 is unable to see the target, will demonstrate that uh, the prediction accuracy is poorer and once drone 2 is able to see the target, the accuracy increases. So we perform two simulations in this case, one with clutter and one without clutter. And in both the cases, the drone is able to measure the bearing and the elevation of the target from a constant altitude. So for drone 1 and drone 2, as I said, the height is around 150 meters and 100 meters and the bearings have an accuracy of uh, plus minus 0.25 and plus minus 0.1 in one case and the other one is slightly better. This should not change the results anyways. Okay, in the first scenario, the drones are able to measure the target without clutter. 
and then we are using a centralized uh, Kalman filter for this for the state estimation. So the states are given, the states being the <coughs> the elevation, and also you get the measurements. The measurements are the location parameters. So here you have this x y coordinate, and this is the target which is moving. So as you see the uh, blue ones are the filter output that is provide the measurements that are provided by the drones when there is no clutter and the ellipse that you are seeing is okay and the ellipse that you and the ellipse that you are seeing there uh, gives you the error probable so that tells you that for 95% you can guarantee that for 95% probability the target is in that ellipse so now as time progresses, so it starts from here, so the car is moving. So for the first 10 of these red dots, only one drone is seeing the target because the other drone is behind the uh, building. And once that drone comes out of that building, so it's able to see the target, and then we start fusing, uh, we start fusing the information. So once you start fusing the information, you see that the error, the probability of um, uh, the region in which you think that the 95% of the time the target is present reduces. And so also the RMS value, so this is the true value and the blue ones are the estimated value, so the difference between them also reduces. So that was without no clutter, so the estimate of the target state becomes more accurate when the second drone sees the target. <laughs> and as I told you, after the 11th step, the second drone is able to see it. And as a consequence, um, by um, the tra track ID fusion, we are able to get a global track, a single track for both the um, sensors. Otherwise, you will have two different tracks, and those tracks might disappear and then come back. And then you have multiple tracks that you need to handle. So here, by doing a centralized fusion, you take both of them and then fuse them together, so generally maybe averaging the measurements as simple as that, and then you get a global track. So how do you average them? By weighing them with um, probably the, <coughs> the standard, uh, standard error which you get from the error probable. <coughs> so the measurement from second drone would create new tracks for the target, while the centralized fusion adds the measurement for the existing one from drone two. So you are only trying to maintain one track, which makes the entire problem ex extremely simple to, simple to track. So track proliferation is avoided by this, this way. And also when you show this to an operator, that will be very clean. So you, you have a screen where you are only showing the, mo the motion of the target with just one track ID. And normally this is not the case because you have clutter that is coming from everywhere. So the measure, So we did something <coughs> under the simulation with the measurement clutter. So for that, we used a Poisson distribution with the mean time of arrival, lambda equal to phi, with uniformly uh, distributed in the space between minus 200 and plus 200 on the x-axis, 0 and 500 on the y-axis. And then we used a probability data association filter to run all the true and the false measurements. And that's what is shown here. So you see the false alarm, which is the clutter. And then, as you see, when up to the 11th uh, the measurements, uh, the error probable is large. And then after that, the error probable reduces. So if you don't have clutter, sorry, if you don't have the second drone, you will have huge error probables, which is bigger ellipse. And thereby, you will never be able to correctly track this target. OK, and that's what it is. And then we did it with the real data. In the real data, we have a real airborne sensor, which is which is an aircraft, which has got MX-15 optical sensor cluster, three of them, and all of them are collecting the information. They are all co-located on the aircraft. And the so we are measuring a stationary target whose bearing and elevation is what we are trying to identify. And so we are using a similar blob detection method, and we use a centralized EKF to make the state estimation. And we are seeing that uh, the state estimation is consistent, which means that the standard deviation is low and the predictions of the target state are accurate, accurate enough to confirm uh, the slight bias that we are able to see in the optical measurements that we previously discovered. And this is what we're showing. So over a period of time, this is the track position, this is the true position. You can see that it goes towards uh, the true position. 
So in conclusion, the absence of the presence of cut in the Irrespective of the absence of the presence of clutter, the fusion of multiple measurements drastically improves the performance and uh, you will be able to do this without uh, requiring expensive cutting edge sensors like radars and also uh, you can decrease the errors. The future work would be to do it with commercial drones and we have already done that and also using um, track maintenance with more number of targets and using the idea of compressive sensing. Uh, and that's about it. Thank you.